Well, welcome to this uh, first part of a two-part tutorial on glue prints. What glue prints are, uh, glue printing requires a plate. You're going to use glue and cardboard to make a printing plate. And then um, once it's all set and dry, then you can go back with a brayer and put on your ink and make prints by placing paper down and pressing it down. And you can wipe it clean in between printing. So um, you can get multiple prints out of them. So let's go through the first things you're going to need. Like I said, this is a two-part tutorial, and that is because the glue is going to have to set in between um, when you create the plate and then when you go to print. So your best bet is to make the print one day, the plate one day, and then print the next day so that it's really nice and set and dry. Uh, but this is really a kind of a fun uh, project because sometimes you really don't know what you're going to end up with. You can control it to some extent, but it's kind of fun to see how it turns out in the end when you go to make prints. So uh, you're going to need a piece of cardboard. Here I have a cardboard that probably came from the back of a drawing pad. Um, these are nice because they are uh, thin and, and easy to work with. This side has a little bit of a coating on it. Um, you also can use corrugated cardboard. And the difference is that you can see this, this cardboard has a little tiny bit of a curve to it. When I go to put on my um, glue, I may find that it'll curl even more. Um, that's not a really big deal because you will be able to, to work with it um, to some extent. But I probably will look and say, okay, if it's tending to curve this way toward me, then I'm probably going to put my glue on this side. Um, also, just because this has a, a shiny coating on it, I'd be afraid that my glue might crack off of there. So I'm going to use the porous side. Uh, corrugated cardboard, the benefit of that is that it won't curl on you as much. So you won't have to deal with all that curling so much. Now, the downside is that there's a little bit of a texture from the corrugation in this cardboard. But that's probably not a big deal either because as you put things, uh, as you draw designs on it or you add other items to it, um, those areas are going to be raised, and you're probably not going to see a lot of printing from the, the surface, the bottom surface of this. So, let's get started. The first thing I have to do is I have to put down a barrier to make sure that my plate is not completely porous to the ink that I'm going to use on it later, so that I can get multiple prints, and I can change colors if I want to. If I don't do that, and I put ink down on this cardboard, and it soaks in, um, then every print's going to have that color on it later. So, you take this wonderful... Um, glue and this is this is such an easy project as far as materials go because you can really be creative but for the most part what you need is cardboard and a good all-purpose glue like this this is household repairs and craft projects type glue extra strong um, I like it because it'll hold up for several prints but it um, it will not hold up for 50 to 100 prints so this is not a, a print making process that you're going to be able to do years later probably and continue with this plate but um, just a really fun project that you've got household things that you can probably add to it. So on a nice dreary rainy day, you have something you can do. I'm going to go ahead and put down a good amount of glue. And I'm only going to do one side of this just for time's sake because I want to show you all the cool things that you could add to this plate or ways that you could create this plate. And you're going to want to put a good amount down. Um, to spread, and this is just to make the plate um, a little bit proof to the ink to start out with. And I'm just going to use another piece of cardboard to spread this. Um, actually, I'm going to use one that already has glue on it that I've been messing with. And um, if you find that it's difficult to spread your glue on, see, just like that, I see that I don't have enough glue. You will use a lot of glue in this project. Luckily, glue is not real expensive. Okay, I want to make it so that it's really easy for me to spread this. Okay, let's try again. There we go. Much more like it. And I'm just going to do the half of this cardboard so you can see it. Same, you would do the exact same thing with a corrugated cardboard. Just want to smooth it on. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect smooth because it is liquid enough that it will. Um, oh, I had a bubble over there. It will kind of even itself out too. Okay. Now, I have another piece of cardboard over here I can set things on. 
And let me show you, while it's wet, if you wanted to, you could add some things that are textural, um, like these sesame seeds. And then you just, with your finger, want to tap them down, hopefully without putting your finger in, I, for two reasons. I want them all to lay flat so that I actually can print them all and not have just print, not just print one that's sticking up. Um, the other reason is I want them to stick and stay in my plate. You can see I've used some here and they're staying really well. I use some lentils here because they're flat as well in this plate. Um, the problem with the lentils is they were really old and the casings wanted to break off. So when I went to rub them later to make sure that they were going to stay on there, a couple popped off. Uh, I don't think that's going to mess up my design and, and destroy it, but I think um, that I won't use those lentils anymore. So. Flat things like buttons, keys that don't belong to anything that you're willing to sacrifice. Um, you know, you could even put a feather in. Um, the thing about organic matter and, and items that are porous is that you will have to saturate them with glue. So, um, let's step backward for just a moment. You could also cut out more cardboard and you would have to coat this in glue as well because you don't want it to be porous. And then you can just lay that in now mine is nice and long and curly, so I'd have to sit here and babysit it until I knew it was going to stay put because as I walk away and come back later, I'm sure this little end here is going to pop up. So I really would have to keep an eye on it to make sure it stays down and lays flat for my print, my plate. But that's just an idea. You can cut out shapes and circles and, you know, uh, profiles of people or whatever you want to do with your, with your printing plate. Okay. Um, those are just some ideas of while it's wet. Otherwise, let it dry. You don't have to put any of this on. You could just let it dry so that you have a nice surface that's flat like that. Um, and let me set that out of the way. And then if you want to add things like string or anything that is uh, that a feather or anything that is porous and would take the ink and then be difficult to clean out, You'll have to take a cup with a little tiny bit of water, add some glue to it. Why don't I just do it and show you? You probably would add more glue than that. I would make sure that the glue is going to coat it really well, but this is just to give you an idea. Then I would take my string or whatever material it is, even a feather, and I would put it in there and I would coat it. I would pull it out. Okay, and then I could go and lay it into my print however I want it, wherever I wanted it to be, and just let it dry. Okay, that's just another idea for texture. String, same thing. You would drop it in there and then drop it on uh, your, your plate in the design that you want it to be. Here's a piece of elastic that I also soaked in, in some glue to make sure it doesn't um, absorb my ink every time that I use it ink on it. Okay, some different ideas. Here's a little bit more of the same thing. Um, you can also go back after it's dry and you can add some of these things after it's dry if you would rather do it that way or you can use your glue, the tip of your glue, and you can draw. So you can just use it like a, a pen and make some interesting designs on your plate with the glue once the back is dry. Okay. One last idea for you before I end part one is in this piece um, I made my plate by uh, taking an image of a tulip from my garden and turning it into a photocopy black and white so that I could just see the lines that I want to see. You don't have to do that. You could even just use a, a printout of a colored image if you want. Uh, this is going to make it real easy for me to work with. Then I pasted it down. You could um, take your plate that has the glue on it and lay down your picture and then try to make sure that it's all smooth. In this case, I glued areas of it, laid it down, and then I put the glue over the top and smoothed the glue down, right? Uh, when I went to unbend it a little bit, you have to be a little bit careful because it will crack. So if it's curling this way, then turn it and bend it out. See how it's curling on the edges this way? I'm going to bend it down on the other two sides. I'm not going to bend it on these sides because I'm just going to get those cracks deeper and deeper. Those truly will not 
likely make any difference to my plate because I'm going to put raised areas on this enough that that probably won't print. But um, that way I could just kind of get it a little bit flat again. And now I'm going to, after this, after I put the glue down and it dried and then I felt like, oh, I need to straighten it out a little bit, I'm going to go in and I'm going to test on something else before I start so I don't mess this up from the very start. Oh, good. See how you can just make some nice lines. I'm going to go in, I'm just going to start in the center so that I don't have issues. And I'm just going to create a design on top with the pattern. Whoop, oh, you, don't always, you will not always get exactly what you want, but <laughs> luckily it's not a real big deal. Being a flower, it can be a little bit made up however I want it to be. But right, I'm just going to follow some of these lines. And I wouldn't work out here and then work across or over here and work across because I like being able to turn. I like working from the center out so that I don't accidentally stick my hand in it at some point. If you want to make smaller, thinner lines than this, you could. Um, you just have to know you just have to know that you'll have to get uh, your glue, you'll have to put your glue into a different container. They have some interesting little containers with long snouts that are for uh, henna painting and, and that type of thing that you could use and you might get a thinner line. Um, it also depends on the consistency of your ink or in this case, you know, you can see if I press harder I get a thicker line. I get more glue coming out. If I don't press so hard, then I get a thinner line. So you can control it a little bit. Okay, and I just have to be careful that I don't go back and stick my arm or my the nozzle of my glue into it. See how that's going on? Really lovely. This could be a really pretty print, I think. If you do accidentally smudge it, not a big deal. You could just wipe it off. And then you can go back and draw in over the top of it. Okay? Then if I want to have some of these leaves in here, I may not draw every single leaf, but I want some indications of these pretty lines that are happening. And I like that they have a direction. So um, if you touch into your glue a little bit, it's going to blend a little bit. That's not a big deal. Um, and your glue, you know, as you put it down, it will flatten out a little bit because it's very liquid. If you don't like that, then just make sure your glue is a little more tacky than this, a little bit more dry. My glue is very, very liquid. So let's see how easily that comes in. And then, like, like I showed you before, if I wanted to put in some textures over in some of the areas here, I could go back, um, add glue into it, and drop those things into it. I have to be real careful about how I drop them in. Um, I might even be tempted to do those areas previous to uh, drawing in some of the other areas just so that I didn't mess up something I had already drawn and have a need to start over. Okay. I think I've gotten most of those lines in there. And then over here, if you like some of this spottiness, you could just, you know, make it look like grass. Add your own types of texture, as long as I don't add too much, because if I add too much, then it's going to just smooth out and turn into a, f a field of flat, really, right? I don't really want that, but I want it to look a little bit muddled. Fun. Okay. There's any number of ways that you could go about this. It's it's fun, all the, the neat things you can do with it. All right. And even if you just get one or two prints off of this, um, they're going to be pretty. They're going to be really interesting. Okay. So I'm going to set this aside. Um, you can do that with any of your prints. Just set them aside someplace where they're not going to be bothered and let them dry. I would let them dry overnight, actually. But, you know, in a few hours it will be dry. And then you can go forward with the print.
printing. So check me out in part two and I will show you how to go about printing with your glue print.